G'day everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. Today I'm going to talk about tune shading. And not just tune shading, my tune shader. That's because this morning I was doing the stream, doing my thing, and there was overwhelming amount of requests regarding how the hell does my tune shader work? And uh, well, how do you use it? What can it be used for? All kinds of crap like that. And I thought I'd give you a quick little demo. You can download this um, tune shader for free from Gumroad if you wish, or if you wish to support the channel and support my work, feel free to put a little bit of a donation along with it. But aside from that, let's get started. Let's just jump right in and talk about how the tune shader works. So yeah, right now I just got a standard material on um, this sphere here, and I'll show you some other examples as well. So what we need to do is basically just swap out this principled shader for my two shader, which is actually a group node really. And uh, to install it, you don't really need to install it, just either import it in from the reference file that is supplied from the Gumroad file, or um, you can copy and paste an object from the Gumroad file and then just inherit the, um, the tune shader from there. That being said, I'm just gonna grab my tune shader here, and this is what it looks like. And very simply, you have color input. So if you want to add texture, go for it. We do have a normal input for that as well. So if you have normal maps, feel free to chuck it in there. So just connect that up. And this is how the tune shader works from out the box. You can see here we have a few features and you may be wondering where the hell's the shadow? For some reason, the default shadow value is zero. I'm going to fix that probably. But if I turn it up, there's how it's meant to look. And um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward to use. And the idea here is that um, there are plenty of um, advanced tune shaders out there. This one's meant to be fairly straightforward. There's no fancy hatching or anything like that. This is more designed for um, those who just want straight up cell-like shading. So, and also for those who cannot be bothered uh, texturing anything particularly detailed. That's like me. Anyway. Uh, so we have a few straight up um, settings here. We have a basic roughness and um, specular scale. You see it doesn't really do much here, but it will make sense in the future when I show you the metallic. But the ones to really care about are these ones here. The specular, the shadow opacity, uh, rim light opacity, and then this extra stuff down here. So let's start off with the specular opacity. Pretty straightforward. So basically anything with highlights, we can turn it up and down with a value of one to zero. We have the same thing for our shadow, so you can turn it off and on if you wanna have a fully flat design. And then we have what is called the rim light. So this rim light here, the red outline there, we can change the color as you see fit, or change the opacity as you see fit. From there on in, we have um, the shadow color, the specular color, and then the rim light color. So we can change the color of the shadow to whatever we like, blue, green, anything on the spectrum, you can change the intensity, make it black, make it blue, make it whatever. Um, same with the, um, the specular color. You can change the color of that specular. I tend to go for warmer colors and pinks and um, anything down here I tend to go for. And then we have our rim light color, which is basically just a flat color. And that is basically faking a highlight. And I'll talk about how this works as well in a moment but this can be any color you want it to be as well. So I'm gonna put it back to red so you can see it clearly. From there on in, we have rim light IOR, which is the rim light uh, index of refraction or reflection. And we can make this rim light more intense or less intense based on this value here. So if I click on this here, it will make it thicker as I make the larger, the, the, um, the IOR larger or thinner if I make it a lower value. So great for rim light. Now, the rim light expansion is really just more about how, how intense that rim light is. So you can have it only show up a little bit at the edges, like in terms of like over here, or you can have it sort of expand around, sorry, wrong button. Have it span, expand around the, the sphere until it gets to around almost the edges there. It doesn't go all the way, but if you do want it to be all the way around, we can change that expansion a little bit back. I'm gonna bring it back down to how it was before. And we can actually invert the rim light. So as we invert it, it will actually take 
hold across the entirety of that circle. Now, if you want to have a rim light without an extra light in your scene, you can actually invert that rim light so it's actually facing the opposite direction of your light source. So sort of like a, um, yeah, it's like a fake rim light. So you can actually have it be affected from the opposite end of the light spectrum. So basically as a shadow, you're getting a rim light without having to add any extra lights, which is really cool. So I use this, I would use this if you want to have some sort of moody scene. So maybe it's in pitch black and you have a light shining on a character's face and then maybe there's a window behind them and um, that light from the window is shining behind them onto their back and you won't have to actually add any more lighting so that's really cool but you can always bring it back if you need to to the other side which is also really useful all right cool now moving on to the uh, specular so the specular is uh, has two settings. We have the sharpness and then we have expansion. So I'll start with the sharpness. So basically the higher the value, the sharper, the highlight, obviously. And expansion is basically how big or how small the, the, um, the highlight will be. So depending on how intense your light is, that's also affecting that expansion. But you can also control it manually in the shader to change the way that your highlights work on that particular model. Same thing is uh, going on with the, uh, the the sharpness of the shadow, so you can actually make the sharp the shadow more sharper and change the expansion. So basically, if you want to have a super super cartoony, flat shaded um, uh, model, you can have basically a highlight a shadow and then your midtones in one, you know, that look completely flat like an actual like cell shaded model. And of course, you, by doing that, you can also change the expansion to give it a bit of spacing between those two, those two settings there, like so. So, and this is all reacting to the light as well. So, you know, as you move that light around, it will still work, it will still work. So that's how that works. The other thing as well is that this also works in multiple lights. So don't just think that you only need one light to make this, this shader work. You can actually have multiple lights reacting or being reacted by this shader. All right, so you can have multiple lights. Light color does not matter though. Light color, um, just white light is fine. All right, cool. Um, of course, if you don't want to have such an intense shadow, you can also reduce the opacity. So if you want to have like a, you still want to see the texture underneath, you can have a sort of light shadow, light highlights, that sort of thing. And um, of course you can blur them out with the expansion as well. So by playing with the, the expansion and the sharpness, you can get a softer, more gradiated sort of feel to it. So almost like a um, airbrushed effect on the um, the character, on the, um, on the, um, the model there. All right, let's do an example with um, something a little bit more complicated. And I wanna show you how the metallic works as well. So I'm gonna turn off the sphere turn on this little screw and you'll see here I've got a new shader the same shader here but I've already done done the settings here the big difference is two things one I've turned on the metallic so by ramping up the metallic you can actually have a sort of metallic like properties on a tune shaded model which is really cool so that's how it looks when it's not tune shaded so it looks like you know still looks all right but if you want to have that sort of metallic reflection sort of feeling to it just crank up that value to one and then you've got yourself a sort of metallic tune shade. Now there is a caveat with this setting here. You do need to turn on in the settings, in the material settings, screen space, refraction, and just turn that on. Without it, it doesn't work. It just goes black. So make sure turn, you turn that on in the material settings when you're working with metals. Um, and again, the, all the settings still work. You can change it to whatever you like. You'll react in the same way. Um, and you can play with um, these settings here. Now roughness does affect the way that metallics work. So that's what this is for mostly, it's for that metallic property. And you get some really cool effects here. It's like, um, basically almost looks like um, architectural style line art, which is really sweet. If you play with the roughness and the, um, the metallic settings there as well. So uh, zero being fully uh, glossy and uh, one being basically diffuse essentially 
So um, that's a really cool little feature of this little shader as well. And of course, you can change the uh, specular color. You can change the way that reacts and all sorts of things as well. And um, same things apply to the, um, the sharpness and the shadow sharpness as well. So you can have the same properties of the, um, as the, um, as the non-metal uh, part of the shader as well. So that's really cool too. All right, let's do a little test with something a little bit more complicated and I'm gonna show you um, basically a new iteration of Evie's face um, with this shader, where if you wanna do it with a, use it with a character. So let's um, move this light around. So I'm playing with this character's face, move the light around, and with, uh, let's have a look at the shader, how it works with, um, with Evie here. All right. So I just added a little bit of texture. So note, note that you can actually add textures and stuff as well. Feel free to add whatever you like. So for instance, this model, this normal map, you'll probably see it, is, it still does work with normal maps. So if I hook that up, you'll see that her hair will uh, look a little bit different. So you can go a little spec there. So if you wanted to like almost wanted to fake, um, I guess you could say, if you wanted to fake that sort of speckled effect with painting, you can actually add like a noise normal map to it and that would work pretty well. So there you go. Uh, don't worry about the texture there. It's still a bit stretched because of, um, uh, cause it's a new model basically. Anyway, um, there's a few things that you might want to notice is that the geometry in this uh, face is actually pretty weird. So this is actually um, something to be noted about tune shading in general is that tune shading is really hard on organic objects. And um, you'll find that uh, models for um, tune shaders are actually quite different to your standard sort of organic modeling, at least with my style, in that they, um, I don't know, they just, uh, you got to be super clean with the way that you build out your model. Really, really clean. Otherwise, you just get weird distortion in the shadows and in the highlights and stuff like that. And there are ways to negate that by painting your own special normals and doing all kinds of crap like that. This shader does not do that for you. This shader does not do that for you. So um, in some cases, it's actually better to just build out a mesh that is both super clean and um, with really clean geometry. In this case, it's really flat and um, uh, designed that way because that's the way the character meant to be. But if you want to have it nice and soft and rounded, you will have to consider that when you're modeling your character, you have to be very precise with how you lay out your um, your mesh. Otherwise you get uh, even the smallest thing, like just the nose there, even like the way that normal is distorting there, it changes the way the shadow works. Anyway, I'm gonna bring down the opacity on I'm going to bring that light away a little bit. I'm going to move that away. I'll show you how this works. So the interesting thing about these um, tune shaders is that it does, it really is affected by contour. So the way that you um, work with tune shaders is that you want to get nice smooth lines. And sometimes it's just better to just fake it in your model through contour. And um, you know, obviously there's some angles with this character that would just look horrible. You know, top down for instance would like, you know, I'm not gonna have this character ever probably like running from top down. It would probably be from at least a three quarter top down or on the side top down, but you know, never. Um, yeah, so you, ha you are gonna be limited at least with my model, um, uh, how to do that. But um, yeah, the same uh, properties still apply. You still have your color still have your opacity, you still have your uh, specular, all that sort of stuff. So if I turn down the, um, let's just give this another color, darker color, and let's bring up some spec. Let's change the specular expansion. Let's see how this is gonna work. Hopefully it does work. And you can see it probably will be affected by this screen space reflection as well. But changing the way that the um, the specular works, for instance, is also a matter of tweaking. So it does take a little bit of effort to try and figure out what you want, what you don't like, to get some sort of cool effect. Um, of course, I can always sharpen up that that shadow as well, get it looking really sharp. 
and I can change the shadows to whatever I like. So you need to check, if you want to have a certain mood to your um, your character, you need to be able to manually, you have to manually change the color of that shadow. You can't change it through the shader itself, uh, through the lighting system itself. Um, again, with the, with the highlights, if I want to have a different sort of mood to it, I would go ahead and change that highlight and then change that IOR to make it either expand further out and get a different reaction that way. So you get that sort of feeling there. Generally speaking, I keep the IOR pretty low on characters. So I just want to have a nice thin rim light like that. A little bit of highlight there, that should do the trick. And um, that's it for the shader. Um, again, just takes a bit of tweaking and a decent geometry um, to uh, work with. So you also notice that you can actually get away with pretty weird geometry as well. Just as a side note, for instance, this nose, it's almost a flat plane, but it's actually got some thickness there. But um, just the way it contours with the shadow, it looks nice and solid, which is really cool. Um, that's another little thing about tune shading that lets you do some really crazy stuff um, in that regard. So you can do some really sweet, sweet things with this, um, this setup. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you how this works. Um, and I'll just say, just play with it. Um, if you download this, this shader, just have a go, have a play. It's really fun to use. And uh, uh, one last thing before I mention, uh, wrap up, uh, light radius does affect um, the light, the, uh, the reaction of the, um, the shadows as well. So if you want a really sharp setup, you can make the radius of the light really small and you'll get really sharp shadows as well. So it's all, it all kind of works together. Um, so just be aware of that too. Obviously wattage also affects the intensity of that, of that shadow as well. So playing with those settings all in one will get you some pretty sweet results. Um, but that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna leave it to that. And um, all I'm gonna say is catches and have fun. Cheers.